if you were um, part of our, our audience last year and you were talking about, can you show me or talk to me a little bit about how to do certain things? So I call it the do it yourselfer. And, um, you know, then this part is going to be really for you. And Art's going to walk you through some of the things that you can do. He's not going to get too technical. I hope not, Art, because if you hear someone snoring, it'll be me. Okay, gotcha. Right? So, so let's try to keep this. Um, and, and I mean, I, I think you told me this morning, even if you're not really a do-it-yourself, I mean, you do a little bit of stuff. You, you don't do zero. Um, I mean, if you do zero, like you said before, the RV Care dealers are more than happy to, to help you and walk you through it, make sure everything is done. Um, and if you do a little bit, maybe you'd like to do a little bit more, then then this this will be of interest to you. So why don't you, uh, I guess there's four categories that you want to cover. You want to cover the fresh water system, the water heater, the drain systems, and the holding tanks. And um, so let, let's walk them through here and because and, this is really going to dive into that whole, you know, do it yourself or I want to take care of this before the winter comes. Yeah, thanks, Derek. Um, before I get into this, I'd just like to answer an important question, I, I think, from the chat box from Claudia. She asked uh, if, if she should store the battery in the laundry room or the furnace room. We really don't recommend it be stored in the living quarters at all, but never in the furnace room or right. any place close to a source of fire or heat because they are highly explosive, which is why they're not recommended to be stored indoors. So uh -huh. back to our water systems. Okay, let's fly on through this. All right, so there they are. That's a sort of a schematic of where it is. I'm hoping that if you're a do-it-yourselfer that, uh, unlike me, you would know where these uh, these items, if you will, the, this equipment is on your unit, right? I'm hoping. I, I, I'm I hoping. think the, that infographic really shows the, the, the all the details that there's a lot of different components yeah. in compression and wastewater systems. Correct, correct. All right, so three or four step procedure. Walk them through it. Well, you could do uh, do it in three or four. Option uh, number three, that's an optional situation. So oh, I got you. Yep. Then first, we're going to open all the drains, uh, including the fresh water tank and the water heater. We want to bypass that uh, the water system on that water heaters. Uh -huh. So we want to we want to bypass the cold water inlet to the hot water outlet, and that's located inside the RV. So step three, as I said, is optional. Uh, I do like to blow out the, si the pressure system with compressed air prior to pumping the antifreeze through the system, mm -hmm. but it is totally optional. Many of the uh, service departments choose not to do that, but often okay. consumers do. So, Art, you were saying that not everybody agrees with, uh, with blowing out or doing a pressure system with air um why, why is that why wouldn't that just seems logical to me well it's it's not an absolute necessary step um, okay if we we'll move on to the next slide i think we can explain that in a little bit more detail um basically the air will evacuate the bulk of the, the fluid the water from the from the system and it absolutely goes a long ways to prevent diluting the antifreeze mixture okay yeah right. so you blow it out with compressed air first and then you've got pretty much all of the water out of the system, and then you pump that antifreeze through there. So you know you've got full strength antifreeze going through the entire fresh water system. Right. And no, no possibility of it being diluted. Right. Okay. And then of course, you know, we do still have some of the old, uh, old fashioned people in right. the RV lifestyle that choose to simply use air and not antifreeze. And that is not something that we recommend. Okay. I've seen many, many times where people come in and say, well, I did it exactly the same way as I have done it for right. 20 years. And all of a sudden I have a freeze up. Well, the air system will not get all of the moisture out. And in fact, um, air compressors will have a certain amount of moisture in those air tanks. Right. Well, right. and in addition, it's really important to note that some of the antifreeze solutions will provide lubricating protection for all of those plastic and, and rubber seals in the taps and pumps and so on. So it's like a multitasking antifreeze. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. I tell you, yep. That's, that's incredible. All right. So this is a, a, a really uh, very common uh, product that's available at all RV care stores. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just a, it's a little hookup that goes to the city water intake. Uh -huh. And it allows you just to use a standard tire type air chuck. Oh, yeah. So you can just hook onto that and blow everything out. It's very simple, uh, very inexpensive product and widely available. 
And this is the other, of course, advantage to to having a blow-up plug in a compressor that, you know, in the spring you can just uh, hook up your air compressor and then blow all of that antifreeze out of the water lines. And it takes uh, a significant amount less flushing right? if you evacuate all of the antifreeze out there with the uh, air compressor. Right. Sounds simple. Now we're getting a little technical here. Oh, here we go. Okay. All the way. There we go. Okay. So, by the way, thanks everybody for hanging in here for this. Um, see, we still have a, a good good number. We got, of we got some questions. I mean, people are into this. So, uh, Mac, maximum pressure for blowout plug. Fifty psi, and that's upcoming. It's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. Good. It's good. So, yeah. make sure people please never use automotive antifreeze. It's poison. Poison. poison, like literally poison, or is it just it is. a figure of speech? It is. You no, know, you drink a half a cup of antifreeze, and you might as well, might as well write your will. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> don't give that to me. No. So <laughs> remember, all not all antifreeze is created equal, and even when it comes to the non-toxic potable system, right? Antifreeze, yeah. not all created equal. Let's have a look at the, the details on the next slide. Okay, so when it comes to non-toxic RV uh -huh. antifreeze. Two primary components, ethanol and propylene glycol. Okay. And um, there's a lot of our consumers out there that aren't aware of this. And in fact, you probably even find some service technicians that don't understand all of the differences. But let's run through them. So the most right. common would be this uh, ethanol. Right. Okay. It's the most common. It's the least expensive. It's what you're going to find everywhere. RV, uh, RV stores, uh, box stores, everybody's got it. Right. Now, here's something curious about it. It, it is non-toxic, uh -huh. but flammable. Ooh, that's not good. I don't get how that works, but it is. If you look at the label on any of the alcohol-based, uh -huh. the ethanol-based product, it will say flammable. Now, this particular product, again, it has a foul odor, and it requires an awful lot of flushing in the spring. Uh, due to the nature of the product, it is possible it could stain some plastics, and I've even seen some corrosion on, uh, for example, stainless steel sinks and so on. And more importantly to note is this particular product is non-lubricating because alcohol, of course, will actually dry out some yeah. of those components. So, um, okay. again, that's that's the one that is most common to find out there, but. Mm. Uh, Many experts would, would agree that the better one would be the propylene glycol based product. It's not as easy to find. Uh, you typically will never find this at box stores at all. Oh, typically only RV stores. And even then, not all. Again, the consumers cost conscience. Right. Conscious. <laughs> so, conscience. Yeah. yeah. So you they're, got it. you know, typically they're picking up the least expensive. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this particular product does not carry the same fire safety warnings as the ethanol. Uh, there's very little, if uh, if any, odor, and it's absolutely non-staining, non-corrosive. So there's a lot less flushing required in the spring, and it actually does provide excellent lubricating protection. So mm -hmm. in most cases, going to be a little bit more. So this is the third one. Uh, it's a blend of the propylene ethanol. So you're saying it's a waste, a waste of time. I think so. Why would you? you pick one <laughs> or the other, right? It's not widely available. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'd be looking at either number one or number two. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's also important to remember that you want to see what the freezing uh, or rating is on the antifreeze when you purchase it. Right. Okay. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty here. So when it comes to the fresh water systems, virtually all RVs have drains for the fresh water tank. It might be, you know, a drain valve that's mounted on the exterior of the unit. It could be a, a, a hoses on the underside that you need to pull a plug or open a valve. But all RVs do have drains for the fresh water tanks. Now, some RVs also have drain valves along the manifold system, um, usually located in the low point. So you see a picture on the left there. That's, that's what that would look like. These are just drain plugs that you just take a wrench and pop them off. Let everything well, drain. That's so, underneath. That's underneath the unit. It's underneath. You've got to crawl on your belly. Not me. Or take it into an RV care dealer. That's what I would do. That's what I'd do. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Okay. Let's move along here. Okay. So here's a picture of a water heater, and this is a great, a great picture here, because we want to remove the drain plug on the water heater, and I like to open. We call it the T and P valve in the business. That stands for temperature and pressure valve. 
it's a little lever there it's uh, indicated uh, and just pop that little lever open that allows air to get into the water heater so that it will drain quicker okay okay so it's pretty straightforward stuff and this is really important because uh, suburban type water heaters do require anode rods now the last frame showed a picture of the um, Atwood water heater they do not require anode okay. rods but the okay. suburbans do so actually the anode rod is, is also the drain plug oh okay so that's a really good idea because uh, every time you drain your water heater you can have a look at your anode rod and make sure that it's in good condition and this is a good time just to mention what it does mm -hmm. the uh, sacrificial anode rod basically prefer uh, preserves the life of the water heater um, so the um, minerals and, and calcium deposits and all that kind of stuff in the water they're going to attack the the anode rod rather than the water heater tank so that's really important the recommended replacement is when it's 75% used, which is uh, the picture down below. So there's a new one versus 75% used. For best performance, the manufacturers recommend to replace it when it's 50% used. Wow. How, how long would it take for it to look that, like that? Oh, man, that's a tough question. And depending on the quality of the water, it could be anywhere right. from six months to five years. Okay. All yeah. Right. All right. And, of course, uh, if I, for people that need anode rods, or uh, we always recommend you carry a spare. All over the RV care dealers have uh, exclusive RV Traveler's Choice, best quality product in yeah. anode rods. There you go. Yeah, and that's a new product to our lineup this year. So uh, we're excited. Uh, we're excited about introducing that product. And I guess we got some tools here. Yeah, they don't, they don't look very fancy. It doesn't look you know, to me like it's you need not. That. It's exactly. not fancy, but it's a. Uh, it's a little known tip and trick, to be honest with you. There is so much crud that can build up in the bottom of those water heaters. So this is just a great time once that water heater is drained, before all that sludge starts to harden, to get in there with a flushing tool and just give it a really good flush at this point. is uh, It's right. highly recommended to do so. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I saw that tool in my dentist office not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think you'll find that specific tool at uh, most of the RV care dealers in stock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move along here. Now we're going to talk about, you know, once the water heater is drained, well, then we need to do that bypass thing. And yeah. this could be a little confusing for a lot of consumers out there and without getting into too much detail. Suffice to say, there are many, many different types and configurations of bypass kits. You'll find them with one valve, two valves, three valves, many valves, many different configurations. Uh, so it, it's hard to cover all of the different applications and not all RVs are necessarily even equipped with these uh, bypass kits. So they are available aftermarket at any of the RV care dealers. So basically okay. uh, the best advice would be to switch the valves to the opposite direction they're currently in mm -hmm. and that should bypass the system for you. It's a good tip. Okay, now this is what we call a temporary bypass kit. If it's not equipped with a permanent uh, multi-valve bypass kit, you can basically disconnect the cold water inlet and the hot water outlet and hook them together. That will allow you to pump antifreeze right through to the hot water lines. Not my preference, mm -hmm. but, but it's a possibility. Now this right. question came up early in the chat box. Um, somebody wants to ask if they can if they can just pump right out of their fresh water tank. I would say never, please. <laughs> You're being polite. <laughs> Never, please. <laughs> Never, please. And, and, it, and it's not it's it's not that it, you can't do it. The simple okay. fact, though, is it's going to take a lot more antifreeze. When you drain your fresh fresh water tank, you never manage to seem to get a hundred percent of the liquid out of the tank. So mm. you're going to be diluted the antifreeze, and it just takes forever to get all of that antifreeze out of the system in the spring. So. Please, folks, we much prefer that you pump it straight out of the jug, and we'll show you how to do that with, in the upcoming slides. Here we go. And again, as, as with the water heater bypass valve kits, uh, there are pump kits available as well. So pump conversion kits, and basically uh, it's a three-way valve that attaches right onto the water pump. It allows you to be able to close off the suction line to the fresh water tank, and open the suction line to that little plastic hose. You just put it in the jug, kick in the water pump, you're good to go. 
And it's probably important to, to, to note at this time as well, Derek, that you know, there's so many different types of systems out there in RVs. It's impossible for us to cover them all. We're trying to cover as much as we can, but yeah, exactly. there is certainly limitations unless we're going to be here all day. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know if we keep people all day. We're no, not that exciting. no, 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 no. <laughs> all right. So pump in the okay. antifreeze pump in the antifreeze okay so we've got the line in the jug of antifreeze and now they have kicked we've uh, turned on the water pump so what we want to do is pump through one tap or fixture at a time until the liquid turns solid pink okay so it's going to start off if you haven't evacuated uh, the the water with uh, with compressed air you're going to be pushing basically water out until well, if it, to be at the beginning and then eventually it will turn pink okay uh -huh. so start with the fixture furthest from the pump and we also don't forget the toilet and the outside shower that's important all right you're saying that from from experience it sounds like absolutely now <laughs> this one is a little bit confusing and again there's many different configurations to this but uh, most systems would have a check valve built into the city water entry okay mm -hmm. And if we did not use air to evacuate the system, that check valve um, is still going to have some water up against, against the back of it. And the only way you can do that is you have to sort of depress the check valve, push it in, huh. and then some antifreeze will come squirting in your face. No way. Yeah. In your face. Well, there's that much pressure. There's that much pressure, but. That's if you forgot to turn the water pump off and release some of the pressure from one of the taps. So that's important to do okay? yeah. <laughs> before you, you depress that, that. If you didn't do that, you got oh my God. If you didn't do that, you're going to have a rude awakening. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's cool. No, that's, and, that's a good tip. There are good tip. Okay. So we're going to talk about a little bit, a few other things. Um, I, I personally recommend to leave the taps and drain valves open for the duration of the storage. Um, and, and leave the drain plugs out. Uh, not everybody necessarily does this. Uh, yeah. To me, it's just kind of a little extra insurance uh, uh, against freeze-ups, okay? So there's room for expansion if you leave the, the valves open. And of course, we already talked about that some sinks and tubs and shower pans, especially plastics and whatnot, are prone to, to staining. So what I like to do is just put a paper towel under each and catch the drips, mm -hmm. whatever. And then we get into, sorry, you were. No, I said, I said, look at you, you know, the paper towel and, you know, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tidy there. Yeah, I never tell my wife that because she. Uh, no, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be wiping up all kinds of messes if you do that. Don't use paper towels, my wife says. No. Expensive. Anyway. Now we get into some of the real nitty gritty and, and unfortunately we're not gonna have time to get into all that stuff, but you know, uh, uh, many of the modern RVs have, have all these other fancy uh, um, water systems that are built in, you know, the outside showers are very common nowadays, mm -hmm. but water filtration devices, dispensers, ice makers, the washer dryers, the dishwashers, you know, you, you, you just go on and on about the different systems and some of them are very complex complicated yeah. you yeah. know and, th and this might be the point where people want to draw the line as to whether or not they really want to get into do it the do it yourself thing on this right. uh, because, when you get I'm, into assuming, that, I'm assuming art what you're saying is that because a mistake can be very costly it can be yeah that, and, and, and it's some of them can be pretty confusing as to what the process needs to be uh -huh. and for example different water filtration devices might require different procedures so uh, you know, a lot, a lot is dependent too on how the manufacturer is, has uh, installed the supply lines and all that stuff. So right. you can get into some pretty complex situations with respect to the water system. So I guess I like to hope that, uh, you know, do it yourself. There's nowhere to draw the line. Okay. And then we're going to talk, you know, about the drain lines. That's important. We need to remember that we, we must not run enough, uh, antifreeze into those, uh, sink drains to fill up the P traps. Okay, so that's usually a couple of cups or so. And if the unit is level and you did actually run some extra antifreeze through each of those drain lines, uh, you're likely done with the drain system. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, you want to make sure that the enough was, was pumped to fill every P trap. And if not, just go ahead and pour a little extra antifreeze down those drains just as an insurance policy. All right, folks? 
And yeah. then we get into the holding tanks. The main thing is to sure, ensure that they are empty and they may not have fully drained unless the RV is tilted towards the drain outlet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now flushing the tanks uh, really should be kind of a precursor to all of this process to get in there and give them a good flush. There's a variety. In fact, there's a lot of different uh, flushing devices available out there in the marketplace. Um, my personal preference is the built-in type. They do an awesome job, and sometimes they're even installed from the factory, but there are aftermarket products available for, for folks that might want to look at adding one. Right. That's okay, good. and we'll have a look at some of that. So this kind of gives you an infographic about the built-in holding tank flushers. It's a, you know, it's sort of a, a spray, spray product that's mounted right into the side of the holding tank, and then it's hooked up with a hose that you would attach just a regular garden hose to. And then we have a variety of different manual type holding tank flushers for those that do not have the built-in one or choose not to install one. And these are widely available. Essentially, you need to get down inside the toilet with right. this uh, holding tank wand, turn on the water pressure and give it a good blast. Now, unfortunately, there's not really any other way to flush out your, your gray water tank other than the black uh, or other than a built-in system hmm. okay. and you know I think I think we might have missed a, one of the components in the presentation here um, I don't believe I remember it coming up but the the built-in tank flushers they do require being blown out with compressed air or figuring out a way to pump antifreeze through it or maybe that's in an upcoming slide is it I think it, maybe it is yeah there we go there you go you're ahead of yourself Mr. sorry Mark. Yeah, it's good. Right. It's good. Oh my God, we forgot something. Went out of my head of myself. So, yeah, the built in tank flushers, um, they have the same kind of hookup as the city water entry. And um, there is actually a hand pumping device that's available. It's not widely, um, uh, it's not, it's not widely stocked though. Right. Uh, so you may have a bit of a tough time finding it, but it's a, it's a hand pump that allows you to pump antifreeze direct out of the jug in through those uh, supply lines to the uh, tank flushers. Wow. Wow. Love so that. there you go. Some how-tos. A lot of this information that we were talking about is available on our rvcare.ca website. I mean, there's just a wealth of information on there that uh, if you get a couple of minutes, you want to go out and browse. And, and then we have a, a, a travel, RV Traveler's Choice, which is our proprietary brand, which means this brand of product is only available through the RV Care Dealer Network. And uh, you can go and take a look at all the products that we have on there at rvtravelerschoice.com. The other thing for all you social bugs out there that are that are heavily uh, active in social media, you want to follow us on all of the social media platforms, the Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all that kind of stuff. We have a team that are constantly posting stuff on there. And Art, you're a regular contributor um, on our blogs and, and always posting some pretty valuable information for everybody out there that, uh, that you know, whatever goes on during the course of a season uh, we're tackling different topics throughout the season. So it's a good place if you want to subscribe, if you want to follow us on any one of these platforms, ask questions. Uh, we got a team of people that are that are more than happy to um, to help you out. And then the other thing is you want to download the RV Care app. Um, everybody are familiar with apps right now. You get it from, from Apple or the Android uh, store. And basically what it is, it has a list of all our 60 dealers on there coupled with our alliance partner, Priority RV. So if ever you're out and about and something was to happen, just reach for your smartphone if you have the download app and that'll guide you right in. It'll give you the phone number and their business hours and the units they take care of. And it's just a real easy, easy way to find any one of our dealers across the country to, uh, to um, help you out. And then finally, I'd like to say that every one of our dealers out there hold what we call these events. We have an event calendar. Again, if I listed it all here, we'd be here for a while, but there's all kinds of events going on as we end the season and as we uh, head into the new year. So you'll want to check out uh, rvcare.ca and look at the event calendar and all our uh, dealers are there and they have open houses and all kinds of really cool things uh, going on uh, across the country. So again, thank you everybody for being with us here this morning and uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. And until we speak again in May, bye-bye.